the rock itself, the plateau and all the, how the Ice Age had left it. It was just basically how Creator had wanted to leave that that corridor over the foothills and Rocky Mountains as a as also as a as a gateway to another place, another time in life. The Rocky Mountains are unbelievably beautiful and also very spiritual, very powerful place. It's nothing to be taken lightly when going through that place because there's a lot of different things in that area. When lands have never been even touched by human beings. That, that when, when going through those areas, you can feel the power and the mystique within who we are as people and also the history of by, behind every rock and valley and river and lake. There's a lot of uh, beautiful stories that go with that. And, oral history when being told these things uh, you can capture just a little bit because the stories take days and days to, just to fill out one story. Anytime you get people together who are part of a community and who are the thinkers and doers and the, the ones that are leading in any region, the opportunity to put them together as a, as a group and give them a, a loose agenda, a couple of days to get familiar with each other, to cook together, uh, ideas happen, things, things start to move, and sometimes it's not so tangible. When I first arrived, I, I, there was a lot of anticipation, um, just because working with some really talented talented people, but once we got going and the ideas started flowing, it just it seemed like second nature for everyone, so we had a really good time working together. There's Wi-Fi, but it's the worst Wi-Fi I've seen ever, you know, since dial-up, and no cell phone service, so you're, you're literally cut off from the world. Well, that really kind of pushes you and pushed us, uh, forced us to have to sit down together and, and not stare at our phones and not worry about what's going on with work and actually turn, turn off our brains and, and focus on why we were there and the people that we were there with. The thing that I found was just the energy of the group was highly contagious. So to, to sit there and learn uh, you know, different ideas from different people but have a chance to share your own ideas in a positive environment that was really founded on team building and relationship building. I can say nothing other than it was really powerful. You have natural barriers that uh, you protect yourself from being silly or from being stupid. And, uh, you know, I, I want everybody to be on, 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 the same, on the same level where there was a trust among us that nobody was going to be judged, and nobody is going to be ridiculed, nobody is going to be put on any pedestals. It was, uh, it was a, an important uh, way for me to communicate uh, with chefs what kind of uh, engagement I wanted from them. It takes people outside of their comfort zone. Um, for me, also, just even being up here in this much of wilderness takes me out of my comfort zone. Um, and I think that that challenges people to kind of break through and get to their like real person. And if we all had just sat around in a conference room in Calgary and talked about all of these issues, whether it's around the local ingredients or it's around things like bullying and mentoring, I don't think we would have gotten the same impassioned responses. We would have lost the, the whole human aspect of what it means to be, in, to be with one another, just to be with one another. It's a very complex uh, trade uh, to be a chef. You need to have a, a grasp or uh, knowledge and notion of uh, many different trades. You, 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 have to, you, you have to think in a much more holistic way. Rather, you must think in a much more holistic way because food is holistic. But we are still very much anchor to a very obsolete way of carrying the working kitchens. 
We have been taught to be tough. We have been taught to be regimental. We've been taught to be autocratic. And actually all these features, they are obsolete. They are just that they should not be there. We are living in a society that needs change. We need to replace what I call a, a more uh, feminine approach, a more nourishing approach, a much more grounded approach. It's a, a much more holistic approach. We get so caught up in our everyday lives in the kitchen and, you know, unless we get out there and we see new things, there's really, it's really hard to inspire yourself every day. It, forces us to really focus on our work and really focus on what's out there. Um, and it kind of opens our eyes up to new things, you know, and I've not really been big on going out into the wilderness and forging, but it really, you know, just finding inspiration from our region was really part of what Cook It Raw is all about. We build a base, you know, like when you build a house, we build a base and we build a very strong base. We got very emotional there and we trusted one another. It's incredible because, you know, as, us as human, we are emotional creatures. And what the corporate mentality is teaching us by being over-specialized is the opposite. So how is it possible? How can we dehumanize ourselves? And food is important because food is nourishment. Food is about connection, but that's connection we have lost and we have to take it back. Our responsibility as a team was to cook our dish and plate it 10 times. Again, what this does is it allows us to get our first glimpse of us working together as a team and put together a dish that we've, you know, talked about. And then we got to place those down and let all of the, you know, the 21 chefs plus extra food people that were out at the lodge taste them. John Michael and I uh, had to make our dessert. We had Jamie Kennedy there helping us out. Uh, who's just a wonderful, calming soul. I just loved working with them. We made 10 of them, and then we plated them, and then there was, I don't know, was there 40 people there standing around the table critiquing it? Some people, you know, loved the frozen ice milk, and some people thought it should be ice cream, and it turned into like, I don't know, it was an awesome debate. I, I was thoroughly entertained by the whole process. I loved it. Sitting back and watching this, thinking like, oh man, I don't want, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I like this portion of the of the evening. We put our dish out, the last dish, and I'm waiting, and people are eating it. And any feedback other than the super positive feedback was, I found extremely constructive, which I very much appreciated. Taking those little bits of of wisdom from these chefs that I, I highly respect. And it's almost like you have this think tank uh, of like 40 people that can just like turn your brain around just a little bit to see it in a different light and it just helps change it a little bit more that makes it even better. And so I was terrified at first to, to present to the group but I loved that that part of the retreat and, and just a chance to critique each other's work. And it's good to get critique. It makes you put a second or a third foot on what you're doing. I think in some way it's even harder to, to give critique than taking it uh, because everybody has set different opinions about things. You have to respect that uh, only because you think that it should be done or should be in one way, it's not necessarily the right way to go. You know, the majority of them, they want to have the ego on, on the plate and, and I think we were able to strip that down from them and that for me was a huge achievement. These ingredients are very sort of simple, esoteric ingredients, like where, you know, canola. You know, my cuisine is extremely flavor forward, so I was, you know, kind of like, am I the right fit for this? I mean, it really challenged me. I think it was awesome. I mean, I think that that's, that's the whole point. It's, uh, you know, I have a very specific point of view, and it was really nice to actually collaborate with other chefs that, you know, it wasn't like this. It wasn't like, no, 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 we can't do this, we need to do that. It was like, oh, cool. That's rad, like how can we incorporate that? Let's stay true to the whole thing, but how can we, you know, all kind of bounce off of each other, 
with like a really like ultimate amount of respect for each other. Alessandro was really pushing us to, to get into conversation with each other. And so every night we sat down and we had a great conversation with 30 people. And, you know, we talked about certain topics. We talked about, uh, you know, unwanted behavior in the kitchen. We talked about bullism, which actually put everything <clears throat> into a very uncomfortable uh, position. But this is what Kui Ra is about. It's, it's about, you know, talking, making statements, uh, talking about issues. And I think we, as a trade, we, uh, as any trade, it cannot be developed and mature if you are not able to talk about the goals that you have in your closet. Alessandro made a point of, of having a discussion point on the, the indigenous influence, let's call it that. And I think that we all agreed that, you know, it's not a matter of saying, taking something like pemmican and putting it on a menu, you know, pemmican with, uh, you know, bison carpaccio or something, and then calling it indigenous cooking or new, the, the new indigenous cooking or something. No, it's about taking the, the spirit of a people's that were here thousands of years before our relatively short intervention into this area, the last 150 years, and paying homage to that in how we think about food. So, you know, a culture that realized that sustainability was key to their own survival out here, doing whatever they were doing. It's those touchstones of thought that should be applied to how we, how we go forward. And it's, you know, that's a terroir thing, right? Terroir isn't just about the earth, it's, it's really about the people, you know, and how they influence how we make food in a certain area. Cook It Raw for me has been the world. The reason why this is, this is extremely important to me is because every time I get a platform to talk about First Nations and, and the Cree food or, or whatever, it's just another step for me to get further in what I'm trying to achieve. And um, that goes beyond food. That goes into sp some spirituality and it goes into some good, clean thinking. They have been the carrier of, uh, of uh, the carrier, I would say, the stewards of the land for so many centuries. And us, as Westerners, we just came here and wiped that knowledge, killed that knowledge. We did our initial dish in Kananaskis and now we're prepping for our first media dinner that we're doing for 50 people. I'm on team root vegetable! <laughs> when you get to sit down with your colleagues and listen and learn what they can give to you and what you can give to them, it's sort of this amazing experience that you don't get to have that often. They work in much smaller cities than I do and it's been really neat to see how much they know of their cities and the people they work with and the farmers and we were in the farmer's market today and like Cam knew everybody and like, that's fascinating. Whereas in New York, you're so anonymous. It's much harder to make those connections. And I think, wow, that's a, what a great way to be able to run a restaurant. We're wood roasting some in a, in a salt dough. So we want to do raw, we want to do roasted, we're doing juiced, we're doing, so we're doing quite a few different preparations of the root vegetables. Beets and parsnip root and this amazing uh, beet ravioli that uh, Elizabeth came up with, the goat cheese filling. Um, we also have a carrot cocktail that we're serving along with it. It's really celebrating sort of what's in season right now. 
We're on Team Honey. We're making uh, a honey dish, obviously, with uh, a char. Uh, some cold rabi, rhubarb, cranberries. We make like a honey toffee, but with salt. And we make a honey beer bread. Red Fife Puri, so Puri is uh, basically a deep fried uh, Indian flatbread with a fenugreek pesto. We had some wild boar jowl on there that was sous vide and then finished on the uh, grill. And then just some julienne uh, Asian pear, which is somewhat local just from the other side, um, as well as some crispy wheat berries. We forget as Albertans that some of these things, and as Canadians, I think we're just humble when it comes to it. So we don't really want to make an ingredient like the big star but we forget that it is a star to many other people from around the world. It started with the heart that we um, cured overnight. Uh, we made like a salt from that, dried it right out and microplaned it over top of the dish. We smoked some beef fat, uh, made a sabillon with the beef fat, and we decided to use the, uh, the heart and the hanger. We also forged some uh, wild juniper berries they weren't quite ripe yet, so they were still green, and we made a nice vinegar with that, a little bit of a vinaigrette um, to put on the dish, just to add some acid. And we used some uh, wilted beet greens as well. It's a difficult ingredient because it's usually something you, you cook in as opposed to cook with. So we're using a lot of different brassicas, radishes, turnips, uh, kale, and we're trying to build up layers of, uh, of different, I suppose for me, kind of bitterness and acidity and um, to try and, get, try and get to the essence of what canola is. We've braised the bison cheek with the flavors of pemmican. So we have some rose hips. Uh, we have some berries, we have some wild sage. It's similar to beef in a way, but it has much more of an earthy component to it. You can taste the grass that it's feeding on, you can taste the wild sage. You know, people often compare them to blueberries, but I don't think that's a fair comparison at all. They're not as juicy as a blueberry. Um, the flavor isn't as pronounced, they're a bit drier, and um, they have an almost almond extract flavor or marzipan. Well, Albert Adria is, well, he's the big deal. I mean, he and his brother probably changed food more than it's been changed in hundreds of years. So um, it, it's easy to defer to him as the expert in this. He had never had a Saskatoon berry until he got here. So it's really neat to see him, you know, taste it, analyze it, smell it, taste it again, add acid, taste it again, and go through that whole learning process. It's, actually, it's fascinating. And you know, maybe, maybe as chefs we don't do that enough. You know, I grew up with Saskatoon berries, so, so you know, I take them for granted, but maybe, maybe we should all stop and taste our food again and, and taste it more in depth. Seeing the development of uh, the dish, it was just astonishing because they all listen. In one word, epic. It was, a, I think, a true vision of, of what we wanted Alberta cuisine to taste like. We don't realize that now, but this is going to have a very strong effect. It's going to have a very powerful effect. I feel that we have been like kind of the spark of, uh, of, of something. And of course, the responsibility will be of uh, the community of chefs, not just the one that participated, the one that are part of uh, the Albertan community to carry this message and to articulate this message. I would say that for every individual here, they are going to shift somewhat their thinking about their work and it's going to manifest itself in the workplace. We're not just cooks, you know, We're not, we, we have to be very good leaders as well within our own kitchens, but also in society in general. We hold this kind of pivotal position in society of influence, uh, and we have to kind of, kind of take that seriously. After an event like Cook It Raw, there's momentum, and it's the momentum that I think 
for me is going to keep me moving forward. I feel it is career changing for me right now. This experience is so rewarding, like I can't even describe to anyone how humble I feel and how amazing I feel to be part of this experience. It just makes our our culinary heart beat faster and louder for, for everyone to hear. This has given us the confidence to walk away and say, this is our identity and this is what we have to do and this is what we have to work with and the people we have to work with and, and the products that we grow here are world class. And I'm hoping that this group can walk away from this experience with the confidence to say that we are from Alberta.